Okay, um, to the first recreational maths seminar. Um, just going to go through this paper about picture hanging puzzles by um, Domain Brothers and um, a few other people. Uh, so, can I just have a quick survey first of all? What your mathematical background or level is? Um, I know I recognise a few of you as uh, university professors. Um, have you got anyone at undergrad or lower? Okay, so Theron's going for tenure. Right, Joshua, you're a university undergrad. Um, so, how much group theory? Does, any, does anyone not know any group theory at all? Okay, right. Excellent. So, some know some a little bit, and some not replying yet. But okay. Um, so I'll get started and uh, read read you out the abstract of this paper. Um, so. We show how to hang a picture by wrapping rope around n nails, making a polynomial number of twists, such that the picture falls whenever any k out of the n nails get removed, and the picture remains hanging when fewer than k nails get removed. Um, this construction makes some random mathematical magic performances. More generally, we characterize the possible Boolean functions characterizing when the picture falls in terms of which nails get removed as all monotone Boolean functions. This construction requires an exponential number of twists in the worst case, but exponential complexity is almost always necessary for general functions. Uh, okay. So, this is about uh, a puzzle that uh, quite a few people have probably heard of, where you're given, say, two nails to begin with, and you want to uh, hang a picture from it, so that if you remove any one of the nails, the picture falls down. Um, oh, kind of funny. Can you not hear me? Uh, oh, you can hear me. Okay. Um, so. Uh, how much do I need to go into this puzzle? Um, it's a bit of intro here, a bit of history. Ah, oh, here's a picture. Okay, so the one on the left is how you would normally hang uh, a frame over two nails. Um, so just hanging it over the top. And the one on the right is a way of winding the string round so that if any one of the nails is removed, then that loop isn't held up by the other one. Um, Okay. Is there some typing happening down there? Um, now, when we did this in the test with Colin, um, I was talking back and forth with him. So maybe would someone like to volunteer to be unmuted? I'm always happy to talk. Okay, Colin. Cool. Cool. Um, are you all able to unmute yourselves if you wanted to talk? Can someone who's currently muted uh, try talking? I just unmuted myself, and I can remute like. Okay, uh, let's try. Let's try muting and then unmuting everybody. Um, so Joshua, can you try saying something? Ah, okay. Uh, how about if I turn your video on? Uh, it's saying to me that you're not muted. Um, I am no longer muted. Oh, excellent. Uh, so it turns out I need to make everyone visible. Right. 
OK, so you should all be able to join in with uh, saying stuff or with questions now, which makes me a bit happier. Um, so uh, what we're going to do is just try and run through this paper um, and see what's in it. I'm not really sure what's in, so who knows. Um, So what we get here is a bit of history. Uh, someone's making a huge amount of noise. I think it's Stuart. OK. Can you mute yourself when you're not talking, please? Uh, I feel like a terrible snitch now. Sorry, Stuart. <laughs> <laughs> OK, right. Uh, right. So, um, at the start of this introduction, we have a bit of history. Uh, anything interesting anyone can see? Uh, there's a connection to Borromean rings and Brunian links. Uh, so, the Borromean rings are the one where you have, I think, is it three rings joined together so that if you take any one away, the other two aren't linked? Um, so, that makes sense. Um, So we have this connection provides a solution to a more general form of puzzle, uh, where if you hang a picture on n nails so that moving any one nail fails the picture. Um, okay. Fitzgerald pointed out a connection to group theory, which I expected, and okay. So they're talking about a more general form of the puzzle where they want the removal of certain subsets to make the picture fall. So not just one nail at a time. Hmm. Um, There's a okay. big list of puzzles in the second section about the various things that people can do. Is there? Oh, crumbs. <laughs> uh, right, I'll, I'll skip. I'll get to that. Uh, so at the end of the instruction, they're saying something about their construction and explanation on the twists. Section two gives several pub puzzles accessible to the public. Good. Um, We're totally doing this in math jam, right? Oh, of course. Yeah, we'll do some of that. Um, I think none of the other participants are in the UK, are they? Oh, Stuart, you're nodding your head. You should come to math jam next weekend. <laughs> uh, put a link in there. Just a good plug, as always. Andy. Um, okay, so. And their work interrelates puzzles, magic, topology, Borromean rings, Brunian links, group theory, free groups, monotone, Boolean function theory, circuit complexity, AK sorting networks, combinatorics, and algorithms. All to solve a little puzzle with hanging pictures. I think they might have overreached their mark there. Yeah. A related result constructs interlocked 2D polygons that separate when certain subsets of polygons are removed. Category of function, monotone, Boolean function. OK, so I, I suppose the picture hanging case is they've got uh, a 1D line thing, and then they generalize that to 2D shapes. So, OK. Uh, OK, so these puzzles, section two. The puzzle one is the one that I first heard about. Hang a picture on three nails, so removing any one nail fails the picture. And what are the rest? Various combinations of those. So number eight is hang a picture on two red nails and two blue nails. So removing any one red nail fills the picture, as does removing both blue nails, but not just one. <laughs> removing just one blue nail will leave it hanging. So uh, I've got no idea how to do that one. We'll find out. Yeah. Oh god, there are more. <laughs> uh, yeah, so add more colours. Yeah, okay. So this is where they start thinking we need a general theory of this. Uh, all these different selections. Okay. Um, so section 3.4 
is enough to solve many of the puzzles listed above. Okay, how oh, these sections are there? Um, so here on the right, um, we've got the Borromean rings. Um, has everyone seen those before? Uh, I suppose say something if you uh, haven't. Um, so is it true that the Olympic rings are linked in a certain way? I feel like that's a fact I know, but I'm not sure. Um, okay. Um, so the, 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 the yeah, I, think, I, think, I think the Olympic rings are just linked and as if they're a chain. Okay. Um, right, and so what do we have? Probably a Borromean ring sounds similar to the pitch hanging puzzles. Three loops are linked, but removing any one loop unlinks them. Yeah. By stretching one loop to a to bring a point to infinity and straightening out the loop, we can view a loop as an infinite line or nail that penetrates the entire construction. Ooh, what? <laughs> uh, applying this topology preserving transformation to two out of the three loops, we can convert any bar in ring construction into a solution to the two nail picture hanging puzzle. Hmm, no, I'm not sure about that. What so are they saying? Is it that the the two nails form a sort of a a ring coming out of the page? Uh, view loop is an infinite line or nail that penetrates the entire construction. So. So they mean take one particular loop to be the nails, or what? That, that's how I read it. Okay. Uh, right. I'd need to draw that, I think. I'm not sure. Uh, conversely, any solution to the two nail picture hanging puzzle can be converted into a Borromean ring construction by viewing the nails as infinite lines piercing the loop of the rope and converting these lines to large loops. So I'm going to go back up to the solution to the nails puzzle to see what they mean there. So here on the right is a two nail problem. So if we've got two nails, if we look at that as a, a loop that's coming that's intersecting the, the screen at those dots. Mm. Does that... Oh, what does that mean? That doesn't look like four main rings. Uh, Joshua is saying that the two nails are three rings. Left nail is like blue. Right nail is dark blue. Actual string is purple. Yeah, joining the purple lines together is... It's clear. Um, okay, so you're going to need to help me with the colours here because I'm very colour blind. So, were there some colours going on at the bottom <laughs> down with the rings? Yeah, the left one is light blue. The right one is dark blue, the top one's pink. Okay. Uh, right, so I still don't see that, but clearly a few of you do. So a three nail problem is a four loop Brunian link. You're getting ahead of us. Um, Okay, so generalizations to the Borromean rings. Um, collection of n loops. A Borromean link is a collection of n loops that are linked such that no two of the loops are linked. Okay. Yeah, so if you move everything except two links, 
except two loops, then those two loops can be separated. And run in link. Okay, so this is what we're working to. It's a collection of n loops that are linked, such that the removal of any loop unlinks the rest. Um, okay. So if I take away this big outer loop here, can I slide the middle, the small, smallest circle out? Uh, I'm not sure. It's hard for me to keep track of the, the chart at the same time. Um, I think for now, it's getting to the point where that causes a problem. Links are live, we're going to get Yep. Um, Stuart, I don't think you can annotate on top of things. Uh, that would be very useful. <laughs> um, oh well. You'll just have to describe it in text, or you can unmute yourself and say what you mean. Okay, Stuart's going to do some drawing. Um, I got the idea with this stretching out the loops to infinite lines. I just uh, couldn't directly see how each one corresponds to one of the to bits of the picture puzzle. Um, oh, you. There you go. You should be able to talk now. Good. So if you look at those three purple rings, cut them each on the left-hand side, away from the pink loop. So on the yep. left-hand side, those three, cut each one of them and then bend them open so they go up and down. And imagine them as being, uh, as, imagine them as being lines that pass up through a point at infinity and reappear like below you and come up. And so those rings have sort of been projected out. And, and they become the lines in the right-hand picture. Yep. I mean, that's fairly clear. Uh, OK, then I misunderstood the question somehow. Um, it yeah. was, I, I was having trouble looking it back to the, uh, the picture hanging thing. Um, uh, yeah, I've got the A to B link. The B to C link is the one that's troubling me. Yeah. Oh, well, then we just what view the here? puzzle as happening in a oh. plane, yeah? Yep. And those those lines, those purple lines, are the nails. Yeah. Yeah? So I, I can see we've got one one loop going around the, uh, the leftmost nail, and then two around the central nail, and then... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that four around the last one? Yes, four. Yeah, it's a lot easier to see with this... Uh, um, this Brunian one. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. All is clear now. We can carry on. Okay. Right. Uh, so, uh, Herman Brun introduced Brunian links in 1892. Excellent. Uh, so, we have some references for this thing with the infinite lines and so on. Theodore Stanford. No, he doesn't go to Stanford. That's a shame. Um, characterizes the generalized form of Brunian links where the removal of arbitrary subsets of loops causes the link to fall apart. Uh, so, for years they thought that was the same as their problem, and then they must have realized they didn't, hence the paper. Uh, Okay, so that's a dead end for them, apparently. And now we're going to get into some group theory. Um, so, oh yeah, this is the bit that I looked at very quickly, cheatingly, before. Uh, and I got this straight away. So, we'll see how we go with this. Um, the way to abstract a weaving of the rope around N nails is to use the free group on N generators. So... Uh, do I need to explain that? Quick vote. Uh, 
Uh, okay, so it looks like a yes. Yeah. So the free group is, um, you can think about it as if you have a set of letters, you can write out strings of those letters. Um, and if you say that each letter has an inverse, um, so like here we've got x1, x1 inverse, x2, x2 inverse. Um, you can write out strings on all these letters, and whenever you've got a letter in its own inverse next to each other, you can cancel them out. Right. Um, so the structure of that is the free group on n generators, and it's called the free group because um, it's the one with the fewest um, relations. If, you, if you're thinking about groups in terms of um, being generated by letters, this is the most, um, or well, the one with the least structure. Um, so what they're going to do is um, have a letter for going round one of the nails in a particular direction, either clockwise or anti-clockwise. Um, so in this diagram, we, we start on the left. Yep, I think Canavan is uh, explaining in the chat. Am I saying your your name right, kind of, or do I need to be more careful? Ah, okay, okay. So uh, free just means that the, you you don't have any relations between the generators. So so x one and x two, if you uh, find the product, it's it's just x one times x two. It's it's not equal to something else. So it's just formal. The multiplication is just formal. Great, thanks. Okay, good. Um, so on the string, what were we doing? We're starting. You go x one. You go clockwise round uh, first one. Then we're going clockwise around the top of the second one. X one inverse, going the other way around the first nail again, and then anti-clockwise on the second nail. Um, so that is. Um, that we're done here. Um, x1, x2, x1 inverse, x2 inverse. Okay. Right. So, what so, they, so, uh, so whenever we pass over the top of a nail, we count that that as so going to the the right that counts as the the regular thing, and going to the left counts as the neg uh, the inverse. Yeah. Um, so. Okay. So if you go around, I suppose you just loop all the way around the first nail, that would be just x1. Um, so I think you only need another letter once you move to another nail. Uh, Stuart has heard the word commutator in relation to all this. Um, I don't know. Do we need to get down to that? Uh, oh, crumbs. In group theory, the expression. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what that is, the reason that's called a commutator is because if you write that out as a as a relation for the group, so if you say like x1, x2, x1 inverse, x2 inverse equals 1, just as a rule, um, that's the same as x1, x2 equals x2, x1. So x1 and x2 commute. Um, right, yes. Uh, another uh, way of interpreting commutators could be to say, yeah, so the same thing. It's, it's, it, it, uh, but, uh, a way of saying it would be to say that you can think of how far a group is uh, from being abelian. As uh, being a like, if the, so you consider the set of all commutators. If if that is identity is just identity, then the group is abelian. So, so depending on the size of your commutator, you can say how far your group is from being abelian. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, cool. Um, so, what were they doing with these uh, letters? They're saying if you remove the ith nail, that's the same as dropping all occurrences of xi and xi inverse. Um, 
yep, that makes sense. Can't go over something that's not there. So the reason figure five, or so I write this one up here, disentangles when we remove either nail. If you look at the word, if you take away all the x ones, you've just got x two, x two inverse, which cancels out and leaves you with no loops, or the other way around. <laughs> it's, it's nice looking at the um, the bottom here, and everyone's kind of nodding along. It's. <laughs> I wonder if that's going to show up on the YouTube recording. I hope it does. I hope so. <laughs> it's like a very sedate Bohemian Rhapsody. <laughs> OK. Um, Stuart's being run over to group theory. Excellent. Uh, what kind of stuff do you normally do, Stuart? Conf oh, dear. Right, we might have to do one of those in a future seminar. and. Maybe I can overcome my phobia. Um, uh, this is recreational. We, we don't, we don't, don't, do, don't okay. do hard, hard stuff, right? OK, right. Uh, let's move along. So the, the commutator, um, where we were, the, this pattern that we had with the string is the same as the uh, commutator of x1 and x2. I think Theron's trying to start a fight here. Uh, yep, feel free to have a brawl in the, in the chat. Um, so I'm not entirely sure where we what we get from calling this the commutator, but that's uh, clearly going to come important later. Um, so now they introduce this formula. They say that the picture hanging on n nails is a word on the free group of n generators. Um, we refer to the number of symbols in the word as the length of the hanging. Okay, as it approximates the needed length of string or chord, possibly. Um, it will be out by a factor of a polynomial. Uh, special identity word one represents the fallen state. It's not wrapped around anything. Okay. Removing the ith nail means remove all occurrences of xi and xi inverse. Okay. So what do they do? They solve the one out of n problem. So you've got n nails, taking any one away causes it to fall. Um, Okay, so they make some claims about how long their solution is going to be as well, which uh, might be good. 2n squared. Um, so generalize the, the weaving that they just did with two nails. We're replacing each I, xi with an inductive solution to the smaller version of the problem. Ooh, crumbs. OK, so in that solution, you take the, the x1s and replace them with the solution of the puzzle that's one nail smaller, and then have the nth nail here. Um, so what that means is wrap it all around the first n minus 1 nails, go around the top of the last one, do the inverse, uh, oh, now why would that work? I, I reckon it's if you pull out one of the nails in the the original group, that whole full thing falls apart. Because oh That's yeah, because it has to become trivial no matter which one you yeah. remove. So yeah, and then that leaves you x three x three minus one, which is trivial as well. OK. Uh, yeah, and if you remove x3, then you've got s2, s2 inverse, which is trivial as well. OK. Um, I'm definitely going to have a, a long, hard look at this paper later to memorize all of these results, because I think this is going to be pretty good to break out. <laughs> um, no, I think if you, sorry, Josh has asked if you pull out x3, then the other two stay. I, I don't think that's right, because then you'd have s2 and s2 inverse next to each other. They would cancel each other out. Yeah. 
and it would all fall down. So what S2 inverse is, um, you take S2 here and you read from right to left, swapping every letter to its own inverse. So it's X2, X1, X2 inverse, X1 inverse. Yep. Um, so if I go back up to the picture, um, we've finished with the... Can you see my cursor, by the way? I'm not sure if it's being sent. Yes, uh, it's on screen. Okay, excellent. Um, so we've done S1, which is this, this weaving here. We end up here, and then we do um, the inverse. So we do X2. So we've gone over the top of... Um, the second nail, which undoes that last move we did. Then we do x1, undoing that one, x2 inverse, x1 inverse. So we do just basically come back on ourselves and undo all of the uh, the weaving we did before. Um, okay. So are we happy with that? Silence. Yes. Um, so um, this solution does look like it's going to be uh, exponential, doesn't it? Because it's um, you're taking two copies of the previous one plus a couple of others each time. Yeah. Um, so the sum of two n plus one and something other. Uh, oh. Right. Uh, okay. So. We're down to remove the second nail, so on and so on. Okay, so Canapan's got the question what's SK? Uh, oh, SK, S, SK is the commutator of um, K nails. But look, oh, this is, sorry, it's the solution to K nails. Solution to K, okay, okay, solution yeah. to the K nail problem. Yeah. That yeah. is, if you pull one out of K, the thing collapses to identity. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. Right. Uh, so then they write out S four, and uh, oh, that's the solution to the three. That's S three then. This one. Um, dare we find S one in it? Uh, now that looks like X four and X two X three. Is that going to be their short answer? Not sure. That doesn't look like the S2 that they had before, does it? Uh, no. Uh, S4 does have S2 in it, doesn't it? Um, about two thirds of the way along. Yeah, so this should be S3, though, because there are three nails. Oh, sorry. Um... So it should be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, uh, what's track? 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 15. Oh, I've counted it wrong. It's quite long. Uh, so they're sort of, what are they saying? Um, saying why S3, S4 works, saying why the induction works, and then they show that their thing, uh, their solution is quite long. It's 2 to the power of n plus something. Um, I wonder if, if you could take that 2 to the n goes, you could have a bijection between these and uh, Towers of Hanoi puzzles. Maybe not. Uh, No, because that's not the shortest possible answer. Mm. So what do they do now? The polynomial construction, which is... So it's not going to be 2 to the n something. It's going to be like n squared or n cubed. I think it said 2n squared earlier. Uh, yes, it did. Where was it at the top? In the statement, they said uh, 2n squared. 
Very good. Um, so split it, split this problem in two. Um, okay, so it's like a binary search thing. So you solve it for the left half, solve it for the right half, and then wind those two together. Um, Okay. Uh, what have we got in the? Oh, that one said what the uh, page sixteen. They described this figure as being S three. Uh, okay, I'll I'll skip down. How far ahead are you reading? Uh, not really on page 16. Ah, oh, you mean 16 in absolute numbers, not their numbers. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> absolute uh, numbers. There's right. an appendix. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll trust you on that one. I'm not going to read all that. Uh, okay, so... Um, so what they're trying to do then is split the puzzle up into a solution for puzzles for nails I to, through J, so second, third, and fourth, or fifth to eighth nail, or something like that. Um, so ones that are all next to each other. Um, okay. So for an arbitrary interval I to J, we build an agent. E I to J out of a recursive copy of E applied to the first half of the interval. The recursive copy of E applied to the second half of the interval. Um, okay, so they split it into two things that are the same size. Um, and the solution is the commutator of those two smaller solutions, um, which will be four times as long, I reckon, as the small solution. Is that right? Because you need one, then the other, then their inverses. I'm just trying to uh, think ahead to how we're going to get 2n squared out of this. Um, for n equals 4, they get 16 symbols because the solution on two nails used four symbols. And they're taking the commutator of yeah. two two copies of that. Uh, okay. So it ends up looking like n squared. Mm. Um, okay. In this case, symbols x i x i inverse. We have exactly n times. Da, 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 da. Ah, if n is not a power of two, they have that their solution is at most four n squared, which makes sense. Um, oh, excellent! They've added a sequence to the online encyclopedia of integer sequences. I was just listening to Relatively Prime about that. Oh, wait, oh that's a very good episode. Of that. Yeah. Uh, Let's stick up. Let's stick a plug in that in the chat as well. Uh, where's the chat gone? There you go. Oh, no, that's not a link. There you go. Um, very good podcast to listen to. Um, so, what are they saying? If n is b larger than the previous power of two, then the length of the solution is. Exactly that, 2a squared. Oh, no, that's going to be 4 to the 2a. Hang on. What was a? Oh, it was the power of 2. This formula is always at most 2n squared. I feel like some magic's happened and I haven't yeah. got paper. Um, that's. B can be at most 2 to the A minus 1. 
Uh, oh no, that bit on the left is 2 to the 2a. Why am I I'm getting everything wrong? Um, Unless it's 2 to the a, but 2 to the a is necessarily smaller than n squared, right? Uh, 2 to the a is necessarily. Oh, hang on. I'm not sure. Each recursion of yes. symbols xi and xi inverse appear at most two n times because each recursion doubles the number of appearances and there are precisely that many things. Um, so the number of appearances are at most that. Um, so if you've got something that's a power of two, you split it in two. Um, Oh. Oh yeah, you got, you've you've only got two copies in the final solution of each half of the puzzle. Yep. So everything only appears twice. Um, it reads like it took four authors to prove that statement. Really. <laughs> I think that's fairly that's fairly easy going that one. Uh, I'll, I'll check back in the chat in a bit. Um, so they've solved the problem where taking one nail away makes the whole thing fall, and now they want to talk about subsets of nails. So taking one nail away might leave it hanging, but taking another one or any set. Um, well, is what you need to do. So, um, we first illustrate how the theory we have developed so far easily solves the special case in which the subset, subsets are pairwise disjoint. Um, okay, so that means that uh, each nail only belongs to one subset. Um, this corresponds to the pegs being divided into different color classes and the picture for when precisely one of the entire color class has been removed. So that's what the tricky ones up at the top look like. Um, so for any partition of all that into disjoint subsets, S1 to SK, there's a picture hanging that works. And they don't say anything about the length, so it's going to be pretty horrible, I reckon. Uh, how are we going for speed at the moment? I'm not sure how whether I should be going faster or slower. Um, super nails. Is that an American reference or <laughs> is that a word that's appeared in the paper? Yeah, yeah, it's on the on the next page. Um, oh excellent. Oh no, it's actually at the top of the top of the page you've got. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, nails with a super nail. Yeah. The, the nail of steel. <laughs> Uh, so, what, Stuart, you had a question. If you have two colours of pegs, can't you put all the blue ones in the position of nail 1, and the red ones in position of nail 2, and use the two nail solution? Um, possibly, but I, do they do they allow you to position the nails? Yeah, I think Joshua's got it. I think maybe you have to assume they can be wherever. Okay, okay. so surely you can loop it so that they're... They're all in one set. Um, yep. Oh, could you? Yeah, you just go underneath all the ones you don't want. Yeah. And then go over. So maybe that solution might work. Okay. We'll find out, I'm sure. Um, we still haven't got onto Boolean circuits and algorithms and stuff here. And how many <laughs> we're on page ten? Okay. They're going to throw in some mad complexity theory in a few pages. Yeah, no, nobody uh, reads the second half of papers, right? <laughs> <laughs> so what are they going to say? Da, 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 da. The idea is to replace each subset with a super nail, and then apply the one out of it. Oh, so you had it right, Stuart. You are correct. Um. um 
Uh, Jesus Alberto Coca Capillos on is, is asking if you can join. I think. Um, how do I do that? I don't know. Uh, oh, I have to invite. Yeah. Um, hang on. Let's get back. Oh, sorry, that that was about twenty minutes ago. So I, I don't know if we we might have lost him. Crumbs. Uh, I need to pay attention to the to too many things. What's it called? This is. Oh, except my the little autocomplete thing for inviting people doesn't refresh with uh, when I add someone to my circles. <laughs> oh, there we go. Right, I found him anyway. He's got a unique name. Um, right, back to the paper. So, where were we up to? Um, we had super nails. Excellent. Whenever the solution says to wrap clockwise around a super nail, wrap clockwise around each of the nails in a super nail in a particular order. When we wrap counterclockwise, you do this and vice versa. Okay. Um, so, represent each subset by the sequence uh, xi1, xi2, and so on. So, give them all little indexes about where they are in the uh, subset. Right. Um, so they want uh, to make up some words that represent wrapping around that set in a particular direction. Okay. Um, and then do the same sort of solution as before, but just in these words. Yeah. Um, the last requirement of the solution is that it does not collapse if every WI remains intact. This probably follows because no two of the WIs share a letter. Um, yeah, this was the thing with all the subsets being disjoint. So there's no way one one of the words for one super nail could accidentally cancel out one of the other nails because it's uh, share, it's doing the same thing as an, or interacting with the same nail as another subset. Um, so da -da 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 -da, they do all that. The length is at most 2k times the total length of the WIs because theorem 1 guarantees that. Um, Total length of the WIs is exactly n because the subsets form a partition of this. No, oh, they do, yeah. Um, therefore, the total length is at most 2kn, which in particular is at most 2n squared, completing the proof of theorem 2. So if k is n, so, oh, so if every nail belongs to its own subset, to its own subset, that's the same case as the one out of n puzzle. I thought we'd already proved theorem 2. Uh, okay, theorem no, no. 2 is a different one. Yeah. The theorem 2 is the second one. <laughs> yeah. This clue is in the name. Yeah. Uh, okay, so it's this 2kn fact which completes the proof of theorem 2, not this one, which is just on the side. Okay. Um, oh, Theron's left us. I didn't notice that. I've got to say goodbye. Um, so I didn't get an answer to my pacing question before. How am I, how am I doing? Are we, are we going too slow, too fast? Is there anything? Well, I, I, I kind of allotted an hour, but I have an hour and a half free, so. Okay. So any questions so far? Anything that, that we've skipped past? Okay, we're going right. Everyone's happy. Excellent. Seems no one has anything better to do than maths tonight. Uh, or, so. or any night. <laughs> we can't quite say that yet. We'd have to observe every night. Um, so if section four gives the general theory. This is where we're going to get into Boolean expressions. Um, I can hear. Okay, Stuart wants to try 
the construction of theorem 1 on a concrete example of length, not a power of 2. Yes, I think all of us will be doing that. I'm certainly going to go and, uh, um, there was a question about whether we got lucky with S2. Uh, in what the sense was that? That, I have, uh, that there was like someone said uh, in S2 we had a commutator itself as a solution. So they asked for, uh, asked for what was the more general pattern for solutions. Okay, so you build up the solution for many nails by. Um, if you've got eight, you split that into two puzzles of four, split each of those into two puzzles of two. Um, so whenever you've got two solutions, you take the commutator of those solutions. Um, so that means so, wrap around so it's, uh, the first set is uh, solved, so removing any one would uh, make that fall apart. Um, that's what we say. Does the commutator always provide a solution? Yes. Because um, if you think about it, if um, if you take away, uh, let's, let's go back up to the top, let's find the uh, thing. Uh, that's too far. Um, where's it gone? Okay, yeah, so this here the solution for nails i to j is um, the commutator of the solution for the from i up to the middle one and from the middle one up to j. Um, so um, is it easier if I ask for a second? Yeah. Um, to understand their construction, they're breaking it down into smaller pieces and using a commutator on those pieces. Yeah. Um, if you just had a more general situation, say five nails, um, so you can have a free group with five generators. Yeah. Is there a general expression for the commutator of the group generated by five generators? And would oh. that be a solution to a five nail problem? No, I don't think there is. Oh, um, uh, it wouldn't be called a commutator anymore, anyway. Um, would Can it? I jump in? Yeah. Uh, so uh, your question about commutator, so it's, it's it's basically some terminological thing. So the thing is, like when you have only two symbols, uh, x one and x two, then x one x two, x one inverse, x two inverse is called a commutator. So when you have many symbols, you only need to find the commutator for two symbols, and then do it recursively. So commutator on three symbols would be commutator of commutator of two symbols with a third one. So basically, like x one. So let's uh, yeah. Like what this. what kind of hands describing is their first solution, which gave you an exponential exponentially long uh, winding? Excellent. Good. Um, so we, are we up to speed now? I think we are. Um, so where were we? We're about to get into Boolean functions. Um, so what are they saying? Um, section 3.4 had one statement of the general form using subsets, but this turns out to be an inefficient way to represent even relatively simple problems. For example, the K out of N puzzle has n choose k subsets of nails, uh, which is exponential for k between epsilon n and 1 minus epsilon n. Um, what are they saying there? So for k between, well, any k that isn't 0 and isn't n, I think. That's a weird way of giving that range. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, there must be a reason for that. We therefore turn to a more general representation called monotone Boolean functions, um, which are now what? What do I know about this? Did some, we have a quantum computing project at Newcastle, and we we for our seminar we looked at this for a while. Um, I think you can make up NP-complete problems, something to do with Boolean 
with monotone boolean functions. I'm not sure. Um, okay, so what are you saying there? K subsets equals K colors method is inefficient. All right, all right okay, I'll ignore you. <laughs> um, so the general solution remains exponential in the worst case we show in section 4.4 how it lets them achieve a polynomial solution for k out of n. Um, okay, so they already had one, but now they want to get that as good a solution out of this general theory. Um, so given a picture hanging p on n nails to find a fall function um, on n Boolean variables, so n true or false values, um, specifying whether the, the hanging falls after removing all xi's corresponding to true ri's. Oof, what do we mean here? For example, good. Um, a solution p to the one out of n puzzle has the full function is any ri set to true because setting any ri to true causes the construction to fall. In logic, we would write r1 or r2 or da -da -da, or rn. Okay, so if any one of those is true, then that will evaluate it true. That evaluates true, which means the picture falls. Excellent. So we set r i to true if we've taken that nail away. And then we look at the, the fall function and see if that's true. And we can tell whether the picture... Yes, yeah, so, so the, the r i's are whether we've taken away those particular nails and the fall function tells us whether it falls down or not. Yeah. Okay, so... Yep, so this should let, let them describe more complicated patterns. Um, so you can say which you can say what patterns you want to make it fall by expressing those patterns as uh, boolean functions. Um, okay. Um, have a question. Yes, I think that's right, Stuart. Yeah, it's just a boolean expression for the combinations that should drop the nail. R one, R two plus R one, R three plus R two, R three would be any two out of three. Yep. Yep. Okay, uh, for example, the function in equation one, which was that one uh, up here, is a specification for the one out of n problem, which they said. Not all such puzzles can be solved. Every full function must satisfy a simple property called monotonicity. Um, ooh. Yes, yeah, so if you take away an extra nail, it's still going to fall down. Okay. I, I think that's a simple way of putting it. Um, yes. Yep, so if you take away extra nails, the, f the function shouldn't then say that actually the picture stays up. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Monotone Boolean functions are well studied in combinatorics. Good. Loads of things. Yeah, I can agree with that. Um, so they're going to use a lot of theory, which I'm not intimately familiar with. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so they have theorem. Every monotone boolean function on n variables is the full function of a picture hanging on n nails. If the function can be computed by a depth d circuit of two input and an OR gates, then we construct p to have length c to the d for constant c. Good God! Uh, we can compute such p in time linear in the length of p. In particular, for functions f representable by a log n. Um, Circuit there's a polynomial length picture hanging. Right. Um, so uh, she was asking about the first sentence. Okay, every monotone Boolean function 
is the full function of a picture hanging on n nails. Right. Um, okay. So if you can write out um, a set of, let's see, something like this up here. Um, okay. Oh, sorry. You don't want don't want that sentence explained. You want the proof. Okay. Excellent. Um, you might have a bit of a wait for that. From the look of it, this doesn't look very proofy. Well, I, I think from a an instinctive point of view that we we know we can do basically any any and thing. So if you, we can loop it around so that if we've got any two nails we want to take away, we, we can do that. Um, and an or thing, if we take either of them away, it falls down. That's what we did in the, the first place. So I think that the boolean function makes sense as a as a monitor. Boolean functions make sense as a, um, a way of looking at it. Okay. Um, so let's have a look. Um, so this, this, this I'll, I'll try to be quick now. Uh, so lemma four. Um, this equation is equivalent to P and Q. Um, so, bit of group theory, bit of something or other. Ah, so this is how, if you've got P and Q in your full function, this is how you write it out as a word on the free group, which you can then turn straight away into a um, uh, a winding or a, a picture hanging. How to, how to put the string around. Okay. Um, Bit concerned about where these x ones and x twos are coming from. Uh, what is that? And pq. I think that and is the function. Um, Type it. It's, not a, it's uh, equation uh, two in the paper on their page twelve. Uh, page twelve, is it? Oh, oh no, I, I meant. Uh, I meant. Uh, uh, how how is that translated into x ones and x twos there? Um, yeah, I, I think it's. I think these p's and q's need to stand for just anything. So they'll be. Yeah. Um, they will themselves be full or boolean functions, so they will describe some mm -hmm. pattern of nails that will uh, fall. Um, so, or P and Q are picture hangings, I think, is another way of thinking about that. Um, I see, okay. Yeah, P and Q are words in the free group. Yeah. So the fact that X1 and X2 come into it, I'm not sure. Can we simplify? I imagine we probably could in certain cases. I think that's just a general version. Well, no, because they say and PQ here. That doesn't involve any X1s or X2s. Um, whereabouts? Uh, in equation 2, where I've just uh, highlighted. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I think X1 and X2 could be any. Um, any extra pegs, but we need some kind of space between the p's and the, the p's and the p inverses. Uh, is that true? Is that true? Maybe they're just free to pick any nail they like. Yeah. Uh, maybe. Right. So that's that lemma. Um, I believe them. So if the, if you've got if you want p and q to be true, then you do that. Um, and they're going to do the same thing for or. It looks a bit more complicated. Mm -hmm. um, I, know, so. I, I presume the that the powers there are just doing the same operation over and over. Yeah, you do. Um, where have we got one of those? Uh, right, this is. So when you've got p squared, that means do the winding p, then do the winding p again. Um, or oh, we've got some big powers here. Yeah, so that means. Do x2 t times. Yeah. So go 
go round nail two t times clockwise. Um, yes, Stuart, you can stick some x ones and x twos in for p and q there. Um, um, so what we got there? Or p q falls if and only if either p or q falls. So that was quite a long proof. Uh, I'm losing the will to work through. Um, so now they're talking about the length. I think we've uh, we've all lost interest in, the, in how long it takes. I think just being able to do it is enough. Yeah. Um, uh, the all formula <laughs> expands to 144 p and q terms and 474 x one and x two terms for a total of 618. Yep. So even the authors have, have glossed over just how yeah. awful that is. Yeah. Uh, this argument gives a 618 to the power of d upper bound on the side of the constructed picture hanging. So we're not talking Graham's number upper bounds, but it's still bigger yeah. than you'd want. Yeah. And w what was d? Was d to the, the depth of the circuit? Um, d was the depth of the Boolean function. So right. like you've got a and b, and then a itself can be... C and D or something like that, and that, that's a depth two thing. Mm -hmm. So it's basically um, uh, how how deeply nested the functions are. You can draw one of these functions as like trees, and it's it's the depth of the tree. Yeah. If, you, if you can think about it that way. Um, it's not maths anymore, Stuart. This is this is this is trees. This is graph theory. This this is all maths. Well, <laughs> everything is <what>? maths. <laughs> so what prompted that? Uh, he's done trying to start a fight now. It's <laughs> <laughs> oh right, yeah, uh, I agree with you. It's computing. Um, in case that didn't get recorded, uh, yeah. Stuart said runtime analysis of algorithms isn't my thing. Yeah, I find it quite tedious. Yeah. Um, so here we go. So they're going to apply their theory to k out of n puzzles, which was the, the disjoint subsets thing we had before. Uh, here are some nice diagrams for what they're doing. Uh, converting a sorting network into a sequence of three monotone Boolean formulas. Well, so this is a different kind of construction through which they're going to get a polynomial time solution to the k out of n. Uh, puzzle. Right. Uh, so I'll skip that. Section 5, spectating is hard. Um, oh, so now, given a certain hanging, you've got to work out which nails to remove to make it fall. So this is, this is quite interesting as well. Let's check that in there. They didn't mention that in the abstract. Um, the problem is NP complete and hard to approximate because Boolean circuits, uh, you can encode NP problems as Boolean functions, which is the fact I was trying to remember before. Uh, oh, maybe they need to do some more work for that. Uh, is there some typing happening on it? No. Okay. Um, so we've reached the end uh, after just over an hour after I after we got the thing started. Um, several interesting open questions remain about the optimality of our constructions. Yep, they never bothered. Mm, bothered. <laughs> they were never <laughs> able to uh, say that their, their solutions were the shortest. Um, and now we're in complexity theory. I'd be amazed if they were able to. Um, does the picture hanging puzzle, the one out of n puzzle, require a solution of length for the order of n squared? What is the complexity of finding the shortest picture hanging? For the spectator, is there uh, an approximation algorithm for removing the fewest nails? Okay, so the spectator one, um, they said it's NP complete, but can you? 
run probabilistically most of the time get it right um, with an approximate solution, um, and they don't know. Okay. You see, so, I think it's probably going to take you longer to count the loops and try and figure out what, exactly what it's doing, and it would be just to start yanking out nails at random. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe maybe you only get one go, and your life depends on it. <laughs> That's typically how these puzzles are phrased. <laughs> Prisoners, some combination of awful logic. Uh, I, I like Stuart's <laughs> answer. Uh, just cut the rope. Yep, that might do it. Um, so, yep, we're at the end. Oh, they've given solutions just for completeness to all of the puzzles they gave it. Whoa! Right, we're trying this one at Maths Jam, Colin. <laughs> Puzzle 11, right? <laughs> yeah. And, and that, uh, oh yeah, they do give the full version of that. I thought that was just there. Uh... <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> um... So, can I find wants to demonstrate the one nail answer? You going to do that for us in the video chat? I'm going to click on you if you do. And oh, uh, uh, no, 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 not quite. I mean, I meant perhaps at some point of time. If, if we we can show that if you take the the only nail out, the picture falls down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe for mathematicians, we need to do that. It's true. <laughs> okay, so Stuart's typing, and at the beginning they made an analogy to links. Right. Yeah, the Brownian links. Uh, maybe I'll explain this rather than type it all. Um, yeah, they yep. made this analogy to basically the links and the string. Um, there's no major distinction between them. They're all the nails are just infinite loops of strings themselves. Yeah. So I don't think this is going anywhere. Is there some kind of permutation to this problem where we label all the nails as nail plus one? The string, the real life string, becomes labeled nail one. What am I trying to say? We've, we've, got, we've got n nails and one piece of string. So couldn't the string be labelled as one of the nails and one of the nails be labelled as the string? Possibly, yeah. Make it sort of cyclic. Um. Oh no, because um, they needed lots of symmetry in the... Uh, let's see, where were we? This Brunian link thing. Um, is is that symmetric if you try and swap one of the loops for the other? Uh, like, can you shift this this wiggly one round to make it look like the middle circle, and can you make the middle circles wiggly to make it look like that? Um, if you can, then the answer to your yeah, that's yeah, Josh is right. Um... Oh, sorry, I think Josh is right. I don't know if he's right. Um, yeah, because the the string counts as a nail that if you if you cut it, if you get rid of it, then everything falls apart. Yeah, we only have this link this link with Brennian links for the one out of n problem. Um, okay, so uh, got any more questions before we we finish? Yes, please. Uh, can we do this again? Yeah. So, I've got no more maths questions. I've got a couple of questions for you. Um, so, w was this fairly enjoyable? Was this worth doing? I think it's been pretty positive from my end. Yes. Okay. Cool. Um, you sort of have a fear when you ask people to join in with something that you've just made up that uh, maybe the idea is bad and you can get stony faces. Uh, so that's very gratifying. Um, how how often should we do this? Do you think? Do you think every fortnight would be okay? Yeah, every couple of weeks sounds sounds good to me. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, cool. And we would maybe rotate leaders. I mean, yeah. I mean, you, did, you did a great job, Chris. And don't, don't take that as a criticism. As um, it, it might be, other people want to. Yeah, I, I think the, the spotlight. I, yeah, 
I picked a paper I felt able to to work through. Um, so it would be good to someone else to do something that's more in that area. Yeah. Um, uh, so I have a question. Like, uh, okay. Uh, how long did it take for uh, Christian to uh, work through this whole paper, or, or like, is he working along with us now? Oh, I've just been going through it with you. Um, I had a quick look um, last weekend just to check that um, nothing crazy was happening, that it was a, a decent paper, but I didn't, I didn't read to any of the proofs or anything like that. Okay, okay, okay. So Thomas feels that he should have had a look at the PDF or a look at the paper beforehand. Um, I'm not sure about that. I think we've all learnt a little bit. Um, I think looking at it afterwards is definitely something I'm going to do. Um, yeah. I'm definitely going to try try out at least the one out of n puzzle with a lot of with a big n <laughs> um, at some point in my life. Um, so yeah, so. I deliberately didn't say don't read the paper or do read the paper. Uh, I gave the link to the paper beforehand because um, you might, I don't know. Um, some, sometimes it's good to be well prepared for something or sometimes you just want to uh, find out a little bit and then decide if you want to go through it. Yeah, then I guess it varies depending on your your approach to reading papers, I'm, I guess. Yeah. If if you've got um, the uh, if you're of the mindset that you'd rather kind of be be familiar with it before you come in, then go ahead and read it. If you if you'd rather say, oh, I want to learn something new, I want it to be a surprise, you can. Uh, just, yeah. Okay. So uh, yeah. So I, I think the format has worked sort of okay there. Um, we've had uh, all of your videos down here the whole time, but not mine. <laughs> So uh, I think I'll, how do we do? Oh, uh, there we go. Excellent. I turned off screen share. So uh, <laughs> thank you all for joining in. Um, I think uh, possibly we'll end the recording now. Um, Good to see you all. Yep, and we might do another one of these in a fortnight or so. Okay.